Are you checking in? I said don't touch me! I had to tell you my predicament that I'm in. My bellhop informed us at the desk of your situation. Shiraz? If there is absolutely anything we can do for you, do not hesitate to call me at this desk. Have a good night, ma'am. Someone must be a bad influence on you. I wonder who that may be. But because I want to keep our memory good, I'm going to walk away. And I beg of you, Cat, to let me. The breast of chicken a la rose is too delicious not to savor. What was wrong with me? Was I not good enough? She learned about us. You have no claim to me any more than she ever had. It was like I had never left. You should have left, Cat. George, do you know where he is? My eyes widened in horror. But it was not enough to wash the blood off my hands. Would you like to skip the formalities and get straight to... business? Being the romantic he was, didn't hold back. He gave me everything I needed. I made certain of that. I couldn't let him threaten me. And there it was, room 707. Hey folks, before we get started, I wanted to give you just a little bit behind the scenes at Mercury Theatre Podcast. So, if I'm not at my full-time job, I can nearly guarantee you that I'm doing something podcast-related. Whether that's recording with the gang, writing the scripts on post-production, publishing, working social media, updating the website, or any number of things. I am almost always doing something for the podcasts. Yep, I said podcasts with an S. We are in pre-production of a series called Universe 25, which we'll be updating you on in the future, as we know a more precise publication date. I am so excited about this project, as up until now, Mercury Theatre Podcast has been what I refer to as my podcasting playground. Mercury Theatre Podcast will be focusing on more action-adventure episodes in Season 2, after the episode Room 707, Adventure Academy will be published, taking the role of the pilot episode before the episode Most Precious Girl. You shouldn't notice a change on your end, but just in case, there's your forewarning. I started Mercury Theatre Podcast we with amateur artists start with the sole purpose of giving an outlet We are for now at nine to total audio drama episodes, and episode 10 is right around the corner. I want to give a ton of thanks to everyone who has stuck around and supported us from the very beginning. Without your support and reviews, it would not only be a daunting task, but far harder to feel appreciated. So, thank you. If you haven't already, we would really appreciate it if you would rate and review the podcast. This will help us as it'll allow podcast algorithms to recognize and recommend us to listeners who might appreciate this podcast. We're in the process of submitting the podcast and audio drama podcast competitions, and these reviews may also assist with our standing in those. You never know. Also, as a thank you, we would recognize you by name in an upcoming episode as a crew member. Thanks, set designer, lighting director, makeup artist, and the like. If you can share this podcast with a friend, family member, or even an enemy, that is always the best method of sharing a podcast. I personally love helping people download an episode if they show interest, just in case they don't already know how podcasts work. Mercury Theatre Podcast is now on so many social media platforms. We're on Facebook as a private group and a public page. Mercury Theatre Podcast. On Instagram at Mercury Theatre Podcast. On Twitter as Mercury Podcast. I love receiving emails to share with the crew at john at mercurytheaterpodcast.com. Heck, I even made a TikTok if you wanted to follow me there. That's also on Mercury Theater Podcast. I'd love for you to follow us on any of those platforms. Speaking of mercurytheaterpodcast.com, there is a journal I keep fairly updated. And if you'd like, you can join the email list and get subscribed to the podcast email. Keep yourself updated on upcoming giveaways and more. And one more thing, we absolutely love doing this craft, but making a quality podcast is not a free endeavor. Far from it. Professional audio drama series can easily cost $50,000 a season. 
Now, we don't cost that much, but any monetary help is greatly appreciated. And every Patreon patron gets exclusive bonus content, including outtakes, scripts to read along to, bonus minisodes, and more, for as little as two bucks a month. It's not much, but it helps us out tremendously. It'll help keep this show going and giving these artists a platform to get experience and place to get their talents recognized. If you don't mind parting with two, five, or ten bucks a month to help support us, go to mercurytheaterpodcast.com and click on the support tab. And if a monthly subscription isn't your thing, you can drop us a few bucks as a tip on the same page on our website, mercurytheaterpodcast.com. But enough of that. Let's get on to today's guest, Bryn Curry. Bryn, welcome. Hello. How's it going? Things are great. Just got done with a great recording session. Feeling good. Oh, good. Who is that with? <laughs> oh. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, comedy just keeps on flowing from my end of the uh, the microphone. <laughs> hey, so I have I have a bunch of questions for you because you know when I, when I first heard your audition, I absolutely had to have you and Georgina and I. Actually, Aww. the first episode that you were you were cast for was the the lost control which is now two episodes ago i told georgina because she was doing most of the casting at the time i said that we absolutely had to have bryn a part of that so here you are and it's good to have you several episodes later that was a fun episode so thank you um so it ended up being that you did uh, a pickup for the episode captain fearless which was an episode before for that but yes. by the way thank you you did an excellent job huh, finally the validation i needed yes okay well perfect <laughs> so uh that'll be it right okay excellent how does everybody contact you <laughs> no um so before you started acting with mercury theater podcast and the audio side of things what experience do you have otherwise so i got my degree in theater and mostly took acting classes, but, you know, had some others in there. I started working in theater right after graduation, worked at a bunch of different theaters, just trying to find what I liked. Uh, you know, some it was very much like musicals. And then I would do like very grunge, underground gay theater. And I just spanned everything just to see like, do I like improv? Do I like film? And most recently, I've been trying to kind of do voice acting because I feel like it fits a lot of the creative boxes I want it to. Yeah. Did you say underground gay theater? Yeah. Oh, uh, there are a lot of pictures online where I am doing the weirdest stuff, like just very indie startup theaters, lots lots of gay theaters. I am typecast as lesbians all the time. <laughs> It's that low voice. <laughs> they think I give off that good butch energy. <laughs> uh, which is so ironic because we just uh, just did a very a very uh, hetero episode. Very straight episode. So I've been on your Instagram. And I've seen that you have other acting experience as well. Like, did you? Oh yeah, there was there was Evermore Park, uh, which was a major kind of break off of the beaten path for theater for me i actually was not sure i was going to like it at all it was very much like a uh live fantasy kind of a mix between role playing and acting and like it it ended up being incredible i met my husband there i loved every minute of it i got cast as the exact part i wanted because i like came in trying to be super like tough trying to get cast as a knight because they had never had a female knight and i really wanted to you know, swing a sword and wear some armor. And it was just incredible and actually kind of led me to where I am now because I'm not as interested in theater anymore because I really liked the form they had going. And I loved being able to like talk directly to people and you'd like cry with people. I mean, like, you know, I had one family who they lost a daughter who had come to our park all the time and she loved my character and they like, gave me part of her journal that was telling about how happy she was to have a friend in me and I'm like you just don't have those experiences in normal theater and so I I haven't sworn it off entirely but it's just hard to go back but Evermore currently is not hiring actors anymore they want to take on a new 
form, whatever that may end up being. You can look up Evermore Park if you want to see some of the drama. It, stuff will come up. But, uh, yeah, so I'm kind of in between right now. Yeah, my uh, my wife actually suggested that you might actually have been working at Evermore because I was looking at your Instagram photos and I saw a bunch of role-playing positions that you, you had done. And then she's like, that's probably Evermore Park. And sure it enough, sure there is. you were. <laughs> yeah, I probably am not done with nerdy projects. I do still have a few in the works, but uh, yeah, not that one anymore. So do you play D&D or anything? Oh, I'm playing D&D tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, I, I love D&D. We'll, uh, we'll call this sh- short. <laughs> <laughs> so here we, we've gotten to the point of voice acting, and where are you hoping to go from here? Like, Do you have... Do you have expectations? Do you want to go anywhere? Like, what What's on your mind? I try not to keep expectations of anything because I always find that I end up wanting something different than I originally thought. I mean, like when I graduated from college, I got straight into this really well-paying, awesome theater job. I thought it was a dream job. I thought I was set for life. Like, I was making more than a living wage. My housing was paid for. It was incredible. And... I absolutely ended up not really jiving with it. It was not great. I still respect the people there, but man, I did not want to continue. I was so burned out. And so, like, sometimes you go into projects being like, well, this is what I want to be. Voice acting, I want to be the next Laura Bailey. But, you know, I might find that that's not what it is. Obviously, I want to chase it and see what avenues open up to me. If I had my druthers, I'd do all kinds of video games and horror things, and it'd be great, but you just don't know where you're going to go. You said Laura... Laura, Laura Bailey. Laura Bailey. Who's who's Laura Bailey? She's a really, really, really big voice actress. Um, does a ton of video games. Um, if you're a D&D person at all, she's in Critical Role which I don't watch, but I know she's in it. I first fell in love with her voice as a teenager, listening to her play Lust in Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, it's it's so interesting with with Critical Role and how they actually do have professional actors who are are playing all of this. But not being a a listener of of Critical Role, but loving D&D. Yeah, that's me. That's where I'm at. So not wanting to tie yourself down to, to certain expectations because you... I I definitely found myself in that kind of same situation in that I started this podcast in that I wanted to be cast in voice acting roles. And then the longer that I've been in here, I've realized that I wanted to kind of detach myself from that and more focus on the production of of all of it. So if you had told me a year ago that I would start a podcast, audio drama, and that I wouldn't be a voice actor and like a mean one by any means, then I would be like, why the hell am I not in voice acting? <laughs> I mean, I'm right there with you. I mean, if you would have told me I was going to work like five years ago that I would have worked at a LARP park and met my husband working there, I probably would have died laughing right then. <laughs> LARPing. And now yeah. look at me. Yeah, actually, you know, by seven steps to Kevin Bacon or whatever, you and I are <laughs> actually connected because I know, like, my wife knows uh, her her brother dated a girl whose husband worked at Evermore Park. So they're they're like seven I, steps. I don't right? know who it is, but maybe that's. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Just I don't know it. what his his name is. Um, I was just about to describe him as nerdy, but then I realized, oh, we're talking about a LARP. Corp. That's everyone. You can't <laughs> knock. You can't knock off a single person from that. <laughs> that that's everybody. It's all of us. Yeah, really narrows it down a bit. Yeah, I'm used to being the nerdiest person in a room, but there, man, I was like a prep. Well, you definitely have the voice of somebody who's really authoritative, and when we wanted you for that. I do have that. That is the one corner that I can usually hold. No matter what kind of acting it is, if it's an authoritative woman, it's like, all right. I can yeah, do. actually, have you seen Game of Thrones? I have. I love Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the nightress, the the lady knight person. Um, Brienne of Tarth. I'm obsessed with her. That's 
that's immediately who I thought of when I heard your voice. I'm like, this is, this is who it is. I never, never heard anything kinder said about me by anyone on this earth, including my mom and husband. <laughs> that is the best compliment I have ever been given. Uh, this is this is why uh, why I'm I'm here. I'm 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 all about complimenting people, right? <laughs> so having worked in theater, having done your LARPing experience and now getting into the voice acting side of things. How do you feel that you've, you've progressed? I definitely don't stick to my kind of rigid training as much anymore because what I found was right after college, everything I did was very like, must do this, must do this, or they won't like you. And it kind of made all of my performances a little stale sometimes very successful with audiences like they'd be very into it but like for me I just felt like they didn't have heart and so going through all of these different forms and doing these different kinds of theater like I just try to express myself the way I know how and not worry so much about you know what does the audience want especially in voice acting you know it starts to be this thing of like if they don't want this then they won't pick me and that's fine. Like there will be another project down the road that I'm right for, but like there's no point trying to be, well, they're looking for this. So I need to copy that instead of just being like, my voice is this. Let me figure out a way to show my version of that, which has helped me enjoy my art much more as well as like producing art with more heart in it. Yeah, more more staying true to yourself even though you're in character for, for somebody else. Yeah, I like to be in character and I try not to just be like, this is Bryn because Bryn is like not always like these characters I portray. I mean, we just got through, you know, an episode where the character is somewhat sexy. I don't always feel like, yeah, I'm a seductive woman that people <laughs> want. <laughs> But, like, I find Bryn's version of that. Yeah, I, I have uh, have some podcasts that I listen to, and a lot of them involve acting. And the actors are talking about how not to be somebody who you aren't. Like, portray the character that you're you're trying to portray. But at the same time, not necessarily changing to be who you expect that person to necessarily be. Like... Like, yes and no. Like, try to... I don't know. It's. I feel like you, you worded it better than I'd, I'm able to. But it's it's in that staying true to yourself, but at the same time being who that character is. Like, uh. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like adding two parts together. Like, if you're only acting like another person, you're only getting one part of the equation. Like, everyone can imagine what sexy female voice is supposed to sound like. But if that's all you add to it, there's nothing behind it and people aren't interested. But if you add yourself, people don't know you. People want to find out more about that person. So you get this combination of two things that are greater than the whole. As opposed to just the stale, one-sided, well, this is what I have to sound like because I'm playing, you know, a little child. So this is the only voice I am playing a moody <laughs> teenager. So this is the only voice like find the truth behind that to make it interesting. Yeah. Add, adding more dimension to it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I know that you have a D and D game. Like what, what's your, uh, what's your character right now? We have just started. It's actually a group of people from Evermore who wanted to play some content and invited me along because I used to be, the head of gaming at Evermore, so I got to do D and D content and our trading card game, which now obviously don't exist anymore. But they were like, "Hey, you know how to play." So it's set in, you know, they're playing a game that's set in like the Evermore stuff that we all know. So I'm a a very happy little elf that's kind of like a Christmas elf going around, just like very happy, happy to meet you. My name is Dika, like Zika, because I'm a disease. I'm that one in the group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have you have a playing card with your your image on it. I do. Oh, I used to be in charge of that game. We don't get to release more decks, which is really sad. But 
Yeah, there's a very limited supply, so now I have a very rare, outdated, not usable trading card game. <laughs> now, if somebody wanted to see a picture of that, how would they be able to... And how would they be able to follow you on uh, on all the socials? So I'm going to admit to everyone right now, I have just started using social media because people are calling it important. There's not a lot, but I am at Strong Female Nerd on Instagram. You'll see mostly my business stuff. I try not to put too much personal stuff there. So that ebbs and flows with how much there is. And on Twitter, at Strong Nerd Life. You will see Twitter I just started using like yesterday. So, well, welcome. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried to keep off the grid as long as I can, but like, I just, I can't hold it off anymore. Yeah, before Mercury Theater Podcast, I had, I had just not touched the the Twitter sphere for years and it had been under my my actual name and then I changed that made it a made it more of a business thing and it's it's so weird to to be on social now nowadays it's so, like it's yeah, it's, it's crucial thing to keep up with yeah if you're if you're not on if you're not on social you're you're professional like this podcast I have I've made so many connections because of of Twitter and we actually have some uh, some promos that we have coming up and we're going to do that because of of Twitter specifically Twitter because I, I made these connections so I'm excited about that um, yeah I actually just got to talk about a pretty well-paying job the other day that I might not get because my socials are just not robust and I'm like oh okay gotta get to that then. Uh, I mean, fingers crossed, I haven't heard anything yet, but like, it was definitely like a strike in the bad direction for me. Yeah. Um, well, we'll, uh, we'll try to try to add to the, uh, to your followers. So if you yeah, are go on, follow uh, me just you... so that I can, uh, get more jobs. I swear I'll try not to annoy you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so if you are on Instagram or Twitter, follow Bryn Curry. Bryn Curry, it was an absolute, absolute pleasure to have you. And thank you so much for uh, for joining all of our podcasts so far. And I'm looking forward to all of the ones up to come. Oh, you're speaking my language. Thank you so much. Okay, bye, Bryn. Bye. <laughs>